Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. Hey, Tony, there's something that every solo entrepreneur needs to hear. If you're running your own show, you know how important branding and client management are. And speaking of making things easier for solopreneurs, let's talk about Schedulicity. It's designed to personalize your client interactions from start to finish. With Schedulicity, you can customize your booking page, add your own logos, choose your colors, and really make it sing to your brand's personality. It's like giving your business a digital front door that looks and feels like you. Schedulicity isn't just about looking good. Schedulicity is designed to make everything smoother from booking to billing. You know, it's not just about the looks. It's about efficiency, too. They've integrated something pretty slick, intake forms. Now clients can fill out all the details before they even step foot into the door. What's cool is these forms attach to the client's profile and update automatically for future appointments. Talk about saving time and starting on schedule. It's your schedule and your success all rolled into one. With all these tools from Schedulicity, you're not just running your business, you're growing it. And for all the solopreneurs and suite owners out there, this is exactly the kind of support we need to stand out in a crowded market. Day off. My name is Corey. Of course, I'm sitting with my best friend Tony. What's up, buddy? What's going on, brother? Dude, I am so excited. Uh, first and foremost, we have to give a major shout out to Schedulicity. Um, we are at ABS Chicago, and they are sponsoring this weekend. Yep, uh, our friends from Schedulicity. We love them. Um, you know everything about them uh, represents kind of like how we feel and what we do, bro. Yeah, for sure. They um they are just so uh, hairdresser forward in, in every decision that they make and every um every 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 place that they show up. So big shout out to Schedulicity, um Jerry, Missy, thank you guys for for believing in what we're doing and um and you know just trusting us with the, with this is your weekend, Jerry and Missy. A- anybody who's been following us from especially from the beginning know that we love Schedulicity and uh, uh you know even even. W- we're not even connected to them. We still talk about Schedulicity because, you know, we use them every day at our salon. Well, r- well, yeah, I mean, I'm going to say it a little more. I mean, it, it kind of feels like family a little bit, right? Like we still have, I mean, even though we haven't had like an official, like, you know, annual um, uh, contract with them, we still talk to Jerry and, and, and the team quite a bit. <laughs> What's crazy because, you know, Jerry likes to cook and smoke and stuff like that. He'll send me a random picture of, of something that he's cooking or he'll ask, you know, text me, hey, I'm, I'm about to smoke this. What, do you, what, do you, what are your thoughts? And, uh, yeah, you know, and people who know me, I love the barbecue, so – uh, just to have that kind of conversation. You know, that, that's family conversation. That's fam- that, Exactly. That's so cool. Anyway, so big shout out to Schedulicity, Jerry. Thank you. Once again, thank you very much. Um, we also want to thank uh, ABS and our friend Kate Gallagher, who uh, who always makes it so easy to uh, to come up to Chicago and do the ABS show. She has um, the greatest smile, by the way. You, it's like one of those... That's why she does PR. Right? Yeah. she's got that smile that like like that lights up the room, right? Yeah, a thousand percent. We we walked in this today, and and that great smile just it lifts your spirits automatically. I know she was like almost like a, it almost feels like family. She was excited to see us, but uh, but you know, once again, big shout out to ABS, dude. I'm telling you, if you guys make it to any hair show, you've got to make it to, to to ABS. I love ABS because a it's centrally located in the country, so it's easy to get in and out of. It, there's a lot of energy on the floor. People are, are, are people are back, man. I mean, we keep saying it, but every time I say people are back, you know, from that thing we don't talk about anymore, um, it, it's like it, it, we talk about it every time we do a live show, and every time it feels different, bigger, you know, broader, grander. Grander, I think, is the word. Yeah, I I just grown fond of Chicago <laughs> and the food uh, and the food, the people. There's so many. There's so many talented people in Chicago mm-hmm. and. Just, yeah, I mean, the Chicago vibe's cool. The Chicago vibe is cool. And today, so, um, again, a, another shout-out. We'll finish this all with shout-outs, but uh, to our good friend Jay Ladner. Jay Ladner introduced us to our guest today, um, and we were just excited to that. Uh, she lives in Chicago because we knew as soon as she lived in Chicago, we're like, we're going to talk to her at ABS. Yeah, she's, she's part of that cool factor. That's cool. So our guest today is Morgan Thomas, and Morgan has done 
It's Thomas, not Thompson, right? Thomas, yep. You got every it. time, bro. I, I got like, to calculate that through every time I knew a Thomas or a Thompson or something. Um, so uh, our guest today is, is Morgan Thomas. And um, I'm going to make fun of her a little bit because her Instagram does not match her name. So if you look for her as Morgan <laughs> Thomas, it's nearly impossible to find. Uh-huh. But, uh, but um, you know, we'll, we'll get into that. I think um, like a Thomas Bagel shows up or something. <laughs> exactly. <you know? laughs> totally, totally. So I, well, let's get it. Morgan, welcome to the show, man. Thank you, guys. I mean, I am hiding from the IRS and I'm in witness protection. That's all the names, you know? Like, that's always my cover. Listen, you're blowing me up here. I'm totally blowing you up, dude. But, yeah. So are you from Chicago originally? I'm originally from Minneapolis area, yeah. And then I've been in Chicago now for 13 years. I live in the Burbs. I'm old and lame and have kids, so I live in the Burbs. But... Yeah, Chicago is my jam. I love See Chicago. now, now I, I think you could be old and cool and live in the burbs because you have kids. That's kind of. I mean, like but my you've seen my Instagram. I'm not cool. We already know this. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. I'm I'm trying to be the cool mom in the I, suburbs. I get you. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Actually, that's a question. Like, is it weird? Like going to school? Do, do people know that you like have a following and stuff? I keep like my personal life and my Instagram life kind of separate. Like people will be like, "Oh, I, sh- I should follow you on Instagram." Like, don't, no, don't. Right. <laughs> you know, like unless you want to cringe a whole lot. But yeah, I mean, sometimes people find me and they're like, "What the heck, girl? Like, what are you?" You know. But yeah, That's uh, funny. I try to keep them separate. Even my clients, they'll be like, "Do you have an Instagram?" Like all hairstylists have Instagrams now. I'm like, "Oh yeah, I got this little Instagram. <laughs> you know, I'd do some things." But yeah. Speaking of things, uh, Missy from Schedulicity said that you guys have been working together. Yeah, um, they reached out to me. They just did an interview with me for the teas, so I'm really excited for that to come out. But yeah, Schedulicity, I've been a paying customer of Schedulicity for like eight years, ever since I went independent. They were, you know, I did my research to figure out who I was going to use for my scheduling software, and they just kind of like checked all the boxes. But for me, like why I'm still a paying customer eight years later is for how they handled COVID and really supported stylists. I don't think I paid for like my, my annual or my monthly fee for like nine months and they just kept extending it. And so even though that's a small bill of mine behind the chair, it was huge to me because I also wasn't scheduling anyone during those times. So to have that like comp was amazing. And I know that that hurt their bottom line at the end of the day, but it was huge for stylists and like seeing that support genuine support. Cause it wasn't everywhere in the industry. Right. And I get that all brands couldn't do that. So that was huge to me. Yeah, it's amazing, actually, you know, how Schedulicity set themselves up because, I mean, we talked about it a little bit earlier, but, like, their funnel is always the stylist that works behind the chair. You know, they they, yeah. they always seem to step up for us and just, and same, I mean, for Tony and I, it, it's the same. Like, we just love them, and, and for the same reasons, I don't think we're ever going to leave either. Yeah, I feel like they really feel like people behind the brand and not just like oh, that's a great very point. corporate, you know. For sure. So, yeah, and it is. Them. I mean, if you've, if you've ever used their uh, their uh, their rock stars, they're exactly that. They're just rock stars. Yeah, it's true, and it's like a. I've been you know approached by other brands to, for them to sponsor me, and I will always remain a Schedulicity customer because it's easy to use. It has everything I need. Plus they've got a bunch of new features coming that I'm really excited about, but like, it's just like the, the heart is there. So I always appreciate that from a brand. I love that. The heart is there. So how'd you get to Chicago? Uh, my husband, my husband's love. from here. It was yeah, love. love. You uh, know, we met waiting for a cab downtown Chicago and, um, well, well, this living- is true. Yeah, this is true. This is a rom com. Okay, here, 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 bring it back. All right, all right. All right I've tell seen us about the show that. on Netflix. Come right, on, now. Right. Um, no, I was living in New York at the time, and um, I came here for New Year's Eve because I wanted to get out of the city. And because um, everybody leaves New York on New Year's Eve, right? of course. Like you don't want to be there because everyone else comes and it's like tourist trip, you know. <laughs> right. So I was here, and um, we were waiting for a cab on Michigan Avenue. You wait for like an hour, and my friends were talking to his friends. And anyways, he was like, oh, I need to pay for your guys' cab, ladies. And I was like, oh, you just want my number. And I was like, okay, sure, because I'm never going to see this guy ever again. I'm going back to New York tomorrow. And um, I don't know, somehow I ended up with two kids with him and been married for (laughs) 13 years. End of story. But, yeah, we did long distance for a while. And then being from the Midwest, I was like, I knew I wanted to come back here. And so it just made sense. And I love Chicago. I mean, it's like. Uh, the closest thing to New York for me. Were so. you in the industry at that time? Or I was, yeah. How yeah. did you find the industry? Um, well, I think like we all do, kind of like we all like grow up 
thinking about hair and doing hair and, you know, doing all the things. And I was definitely of the generation of hairstylists that our parents wanted us to go to college first, right? Sure. Like hair was kind of a hobby or something you did on the side. So I did one year at college and I just wasn't happy. And I'm like, listen, I have to do something different here. And my parents were like, as long as you do the best they don't care what I did just as long as I worked the hardest in it mm -hmm. so I went to the Aveda Institute in Minneapolis and had just like an amazing it's just like from there that was my question yeah because I think everybody from Minneapolis they they go through the Aveda Institute oh right? I, I mean like, you kind of have to not to sound culty but it, it's kind of it's a Minneapolis thing and I, I mean, truthfully, people can say what they want, but I loved and, like, attribute so much of uh, just my longevity in my career to having a really good education at Aveda. So, yeah, I mean. There's a lot of good hairdressers in Minneapolis as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah. because Aveda is there, it just, like, breeds. And there's so many Aveda salons, right, and the, just the, the culture. And um, it was so uh, rigorous that it taught me how to work 40 hours standing, you know, like yeah. it really got me ready because it was strict and um, it really prepared me and that, and the advanced education that I was provided to as well after. So um, shout out to Aveda. Shout out. <laughs> I, I kind of imagine that like when you're walking the, the uh, Minneapolis streets that it just smells like Aveda products. Oh, all the time. And like, I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's like going to school in like a museum it's the most beautiful building really like Horst really knew what he was doing when he landed that building it's just like a cool like vibey artistic atmosphere that you just want to be inspired so yeah that's pretty crazy yeah right yeah yeah, I, yeah we, we've been to the airport a lot yeah you know? oh yeah <laughs> we get to the airport and like uh, what's our favorite place what's that pizza joint at the airport it's a blacks or uh -huh. some black pizza or okay. some black something yeah. there but we, we were actually do you know Matt Sweeney I know of him, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we were we were there, and um, and I, I texted Matt. I'm like, we're at the airport, and we're starving. Where should we go? And he goes, Doh, you got to check out this yeah. pizza place. Love that. So, and then we went over there. Now that's our go to whenever we go to Minneapolis. I love it, Minneapolis, Minneapolis is, Airport. Let me right, be clear. Right, right, right. MSP. <laughs> um, it's a really underrated city. Like Minneapolis is super dope. I'm, I mean, obviously I'm impartial, but it is a really cool, like very artistic city and just people are like, oh, snow and they avoid it. But mm -hmm. like definitely in the summer, go up to Minneapolis. I have a client. He, um, he just retired. He was the uh, head for MedStar, uh, okay. uh, physical therapy, yeah. he ran the whole thing. For, and you know, they're, they're part of John Hopkins and all yeah. that. But anyways, um, he grew up in Minneapolis. He said when he was a kid, he would uh, they, they they would take their backyard and uh, over time spray a little spray light. with a hose. Yeah, yeah, and then eventually you have your own uh, ice skating rink. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a very Minnesota thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean the thing is too is there's so many headquarters there in Minneapolis that people don't realize. Like all these big big companies are headquartered in Minneapolis, so there's also like a ton of money in Minneapolis. So right. as a hairdresser, that was a great way to like get into the industry you too. know what that's interesting like um like tony and i where uh the suite that we work in it's yeah. literally like one of the richest zip codes in the country yeah and and um when people ask me when young hairstylists ask me for advice about you know any any advice for the and i always say i, I go go where the money is absolutely even if it's a commute like you know what i've never had to do my entire career yeah. is fight for money yeah you know i've never had to like I, i've never had to be to worry that i was going to outprice the market absolutely i can't outprice the market right you know, right. not 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 where we are, um, and it's so nice to do an add on and not have to like you know be worried, worried. about like yeah. you know, what's the conversation going to be like. And that doesn't mean that we don't have money conversations because there's always people that want to have the money of conversation. Course. But uh, generally speaking, it's not usually an issue. Yeah, no, yeah. I love that. I have no shame. I'm like, I want to live where the rich people live, or I want to work. Excuse me, I don't want to live there. I want to work where they live. You know, because it, it does make it and another <laughs> fact is that. It's the uh, most educated women in the world. I love that. Yeah, our zip code is that. Yeah, so we're, we're you've heard of NIH, National Institute yeah. of Health. Yeah, our our suite is literally like three blocks from there. Amazing. So like all the all the women that are that that come in are either scientists or he, he, here's what the stat means is yeah. there's per capita there's more graduate degrees held right. by women than any other place in the world. I love that more than any other place in the world. But I don't. I mean, like all of our client, all of our clients have graduate degrees. Fabulous. You know, for the most for the most yeah. part, I mean, of course, there's a few, yeah, but yeah, yeah, so that's it. Which I, I'll tell you too, like, in like kind of like a misogynistic kind of way. Yeah. Like we weren't, we didn't get that because because our clients were smarter, 
better, more educated than, than we are. And like, you know, we had the opportunity to sit in all of these incredible yeah. women. I, yeah. I don't know if that makes any sense at all. No, but, I get you. You know, it, it was never, not ever, I mean, I was 20 once, but it was never about that other thing. You know, it was, yeah. it was about like, oh, there's so much to learn here in this room, you know, and it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm very blessed to, uh, to uh, have uh, grown up as a hairdresser in, in the community that we did. So That's what took amazing. you to New York? Um, I was uh, following my dreams of being an editorial stylist. I was young and naive and didn't really know what that was going to equate to. Right. Um, but I was taking a ton of classes at the Aveda Advanced Academy and um, starting started assisting um, an editorial stylist out there. And, you know, just I was doing the grind for a long time, and then it just didn't really Were you work doing, out. like, the fashion weeks and all that good oh, stuff? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did 18 season of fashion week, because after I left New York, I still was going out and working on teams, the Aveda team usually, and um, it just, I didn't, I wasn't uh, mature enough when I went out there to know what it was going to take. I thought, oh, I'm kind of like a big deal in Minneapolis, and I'm going to just go out there and be a big deal. No, I was the smallest fish in the biggest pond, and that was humbling, and I, I think I needed that, too, for maturity-wise, mm -hmm. and for my career to kind of like, burp. and I moved to Chicago, like, without a job, nothing, just like, I'm going to figure it out, and um, yeah, I mean... It taught me a lot of lessons, but did I have, like, this great success out there? No, but it you know, taught that, me a that, lot. That kind of takes big balls, too, because, like, it's not like you went from Minneapolis to Chicago. You went to New York first, and, yeah. like, and so, like, your confidence is shook. Am I, I'm sure these are the conversations. Am I good oh, enough to be here? Yeah. Am I good enough for this? And then to be like, you know what? I'm going to leave that all behind. I'm going to go to Chicago without a job. Yeah. Like, that, that takes, like... A, that takes a lot of courage. If I was your dad, I'd like to follow a boy. Wow. Yeah. There was a lot of hard conversations. Listen, with dad? Oh, yeah, dad, mom, you know, because it was like, first of all, it was a hard conversation to be like, I'm leaving. I, I was very fortunate that I did really well in Minneapolis right out the gate. I kind of grandfathered a lot of clients, and um, I think I had the personality to build a clientele. I Probably not the skill back then, but... Um, and to leave that and be like, oh, hey, I'm just going to, like, leave and follow my dreams. My parents are like, what is wrong with you? What have we taught you? You know? <laughs> but ultimately, they were like, hey, it's your decision. And lived off of Diet Coke and crackers and made it work. And then, yeah, then it was like, oh, just kidding. I'm going to move to Chicago. Follow my love, right? Which is always scary for parents. And You um, mean the guy you met in the cab? Yeah, the guy <laughs> you met in the cab. Which you had two kids yeah. with. <laughs> right, right. So, um yeah, I mean, it It was, I look at that now and I could never do it now. I think with age, we're like less, you know, we're more anxious and we're less uh, fearless. But back then, I was just like, let me just go well, for think it. Well, think about, use the perspective now that you're a kid. Totally, yeah. We, we have a client who, um, she's older now. Um, if she's listening, I apologize. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but her first day in the, she's from the UK. Yeah. Her first day in the US, she was 20 years old and um, Dr. King was assassinated. And then the country caught on fire, right? Like the yeah. country burned for, you know, like a yeah. month afterward. And, and I, whenever we have these, first off, she's the Forrest Gump. And she's done all these really cool, she happens to be in all these really cool uh, environments when yeah. they happen. But like as a parent, I look at that and I go, I couldn't imagine like sending my kid away. Totally. And, then, and then the country's on fire. Yeah. You know, and, and, and she said, her parents were like begging her to come home and she refused to she's like i knew i knew that i was in the middle of something yeah that, right here she was right here in chicago when that happened wow yeah. it's so wow. crazy yeah it just it did, but from a parent's perspective i, I can't even imagine oh yeah right? and like now as a parent i'm like i would probably like stand in front of that car like you are not doing the right. butt <laughs> you know at the same time it I learned so many lessons and I'm like grateful for those years. Sure. And I'm grateful to my parents that they were just like, okay, sink or swim. Mm -hmm. And they did. They let me sink and um, it was good for me. They it never was. gave you a little straw? Oh, there was little straws here right. and there. But right. um, as a whole, they were like, you better You're get that own. raft together. Yeah. yeah. So how did, you, how, did you, how did you get it together? Because obviously it didn't take long. Um, I mean, it, it took a while. When I moved to Chicago, yeah. there were some rough years. I actually went back to college. I went um, and was pursuing an online degree um, and just in business. I knew I wanted to stay in the hair industry, but, you know, in the beauty industry, maybe working for Ulta or something. Um, 
or for a brand. But yeah, there was some rough years because I came and I'm like, oh, I don't want to build a clientele. Like I'm tired. And so I was working at the Aveda Institute here in Chicago. And then I was like, oh, yeah, beauty school teaching is not for me. <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> went to a salon out in the burbs and it was a slow, you know, building my clientele was slow. Um, I wasn't from the area. I was working with new product lines. I was no longer with a va- you know, it was just like all new to me. And so I would say it took a good five years of being in Chicago where I was like, okay, I can do this again. And then, um, I finished my degree coincidentally finished my degree. And then my salon closed like two months later. And I was like, okay, what am I going to do? Like, this is, you know. Not your salon, but the no, salon no, no, that I'm you sorry. worked at. Yes, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. Okay. The salon that I was working at. And I was like, I can either go pursue this degree now or I can take this clientele that I've built and go on my own. And that's when I went independent. And truthfully, that's when everything took off for me, again, was uh, being independent and being an entrepreneur and, like, like loving the industry. So again. when you say independent, did you go, to, like, to a suite situation? Uh, first, I rented a chair. Uh-huh. And, um, but that's when I, too, like, started doing much more networking and, you know, because it gave me the reins. Before, I was always handed, this is what you're going to use. This is how you're going to do it, right, in a, in a salon. And so when it was now all on me, it was like, okay, well, what product line am I going to use? What color line? I'm, and I, I really, like, fell in love again with the industry. And I knew I had to make the moves now. There wasn't going to be a sign over the door to help me. So, um, and that was eight years ago. So, Did you yeah. go back to Aveda products? I didn't. No. Um, I worked with Bella for a while, and now I'm with Oligo. I've been with Oligo for probably five years. So, Oh, that's cool. Yeah. 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 Oligo's like one of those companies they like... They're always on the surface, right? Yeah. They're never like the biggest guy in the room, yeah, yeah. you know, but they, first off, I, I haven't used a lot of their products, but I've used their lighteners and stuff, which yeah. I absolutely love. So bomb. That's you what know? got me into them. I love Algo. Such a great, I hate using the word family, but like, they're just a really great group of people. Um, and so being on the Algo team has just been like so fulfilling for me. And it's been, it's been nice to have like a, a true home base when it comes to my color line. And, and um, how many product lines are you working with? Well, well, first off, I mean, you've got like, actually, I'm going to read them off because Stop I know it. that I'm going to totally Don't embarrass you. I am totally yeah. embarrassed. This is the you. part that I absolutely hate. Uh, well, it's your Instagram, bro. Oh, gosh, I know, right? Come on. Here we go. I do these Well, first off, myself. okay, v- first off, like, I can't ever find you because, um, you know, if you look up Morgan <laughs> Thomas, um, one, it's, bagel. It, it's, it's, it's Jade Beauty Company, where you would think that the person that owns that company you would be would. Jade. Do you know how yeah. many times I get called Jade? And I just answer to it. I'm like, yep. You know, because <laughs> it's just like, but, I'm not going to correct people. But, but it's then, my mistake. But then even like before you click it, it doesn't even, it's, it says Catherine. I know. So even before you I click it. my legal, my, my <laughs> Why did you le- do that? Because Instagram made me when I got verified. They have, you have to put your legal name. That's oh why I put Morgan in capital letters. But do you know, uh, again, people are like, oh, Catherine. I'm like, only my bank and my doctor call me that. <laughs> but it's fine. Exactly. <laughs> Whatever. Or mom and dad. Right. <laughs> You're in yeah, trouble. Yeah, right. So this is exciting too. Like you just signed with uh, Design Me, right? Yeah, yeah. Did you just sign with them? Uh, I've been with them for about a year yeah that's awesome and they just signed philip and, and, they and they're, they're like they're bringing in a team that's they're bringing cool it now. together i mean i love design me i've used them for many many years um so it was just a very natural thing for me to be on their team and they're just again awesome group of people it's a small like it's still an indie brand so mm-hmm. it doesn't feel corporate because it's not and um it's a primarily female staffed um line and yeah, they're really cool people, and the product line's amazing too. That's pr- that, that's pretty yeah. cool. It's it's funny, like kind of like to watch what's happening over the last few years. Is like you've got these. Uh, we just worked with Babel this last yeah. week. Babel is doing the same thing. Yeah, is that they're bringing on all these like killer educators. You know, now it seems like instead of like all these educators being spread out throughout the entire industry, yeah. now it seems like these 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 certain houses are like okay taking over taking yeah. over exactly and yeah it, it's so kind of cool to see um w- um it's just kind of cool to see yeah you know? absolutely yeah finish reading I'm, I'm, i can't <laughs> wait to hear all this oh yeah yeah okay okay oh, here's boy. the here's the one that's gonna embarrass <laughs> her so she tried to she, she tried to sidetrack right, I, I know like, i saw okay, her right, yep. right. i saw her <laughs> so um uh, for the listener like right before we jumped on our our, our friend steve reese uh, was at the table um and steve reese uh i, I actually i had the opportunity after five years to kind of thank him for because he kind of gave us our first break um 10 months into the podcast he invited us out to la for the modern salon digital summit and he was the editor-in-chief of modern salon and 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 here's the segue is that uh what is this uh, artist of the year 20 
2023 from Modern Salon. <laughs> well, Mar- uh, Modern Salon does their, I think they do two events a year, um, but the, where they name their Modern Salon Top 100. And mm-hmm. then um, they also created a, a competition as well. There's about eight categories. And then from those people who got nominations, they choose an artist of the year. So I was very fortunate to be the Indie Pro of the Year last year and very shocked. So nice. Shout out to Modern yeah. Salon. They're Shout out so to Modern great. Salon. Yeah. All, the, all, all those teams. That's cool. Yeah. I, so you, um, what a, an accomplishment, really. I mean, I was, um, it's so, I'm just so humbled by them. I mean, I was not expecting that at all. The year before I was there because I was named uh, a top 100. And so I was in the room. I kind of knew what to expect. And I knew that they had told the Indie Pro of the year ahead of time. And so when that portion got, I had actually just um, been fortunate enough to win the avant-garde category. So I was texting my husband, you know, like, oh, I just won avant-garde. And so I'm down and my friend next to me, she's like, I think they're talking about you. Because then they started talking about the Indie Pro of the Year. And I was like, no, because like I knew that person would know ahead of time. So I was very, very shocked. And I'm rarely speechless. Like you guys can tell I talk a lot, but um, I was very speechless. So, yeah an honor for congratulations. sure congratulations thank you yeah, congrats thank that's you. really awesome do you join a lot of competitions i do yeah and truthfully i mean i think competitions can be good and bad if i'm being honest i the way that i look at competitions is it just makes me a stronger artist i don't really care about like what everyone else is doing in the sense is like is mine up to par i don't do that um because it just has made me push the envelope but also it's made me collab with so many dope artists that i like really respect and i'm honored to do collabs with so for that, I absolutely con- – I, I take the good of out of competitions. But, yeah, I, ca- I kind of like to. Um, I enjoy, like I said, just, like, pushing myself. And that's just kind of how I, like, measure, like, what I'm doing. So, so it's not like, the validation from the um, from the competition no, necessarily? No, I mean, it's truthfully, that kind of makes me feel weird, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I was very avoiding you talking about that. I mean, I'm proud of it, and I'm mm-hmm. I'm super honored, but – it does make me feel weird to talk about like awards and stuff, but I just love like kind of like putting out new work and you know, it, it pushes me to have timelines to do that. Cause sometimes I get distracted when it comes to my art and don't always, don't always put it out there, but it kind of forces me to. Well, I mean, I think, I, I, but I think that that's really important, right? Like I think competitions yeah. are important in the industry and, yeah. and, and, and just like social media, at, at, you know, speaking as a as a general kind yeah. of thing, you know, it's 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 eighty percent good and twenty percent gross, right? For sure. And, and with the competitions, I, I kind of feel the same way about that. But I also think that it's really important that you enter as many competitions as possible because I think that you'll see things differently. Yeah. And 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 it's almost imp- and I'm generally speaking, but it's almost impossible to be the, your best self without kind of doing competition because it trains your eye in a different way. And like you said, you get to like collaborate with with different artists who then have different input, and it's not it's not all it's not all you, or yeah. you can pick up stuff uh, along the way. Yeah. That was so ar- inarticulate. I apologize, but but yeah, b- no, I but get you. the feel. Yeah. It opens yeah. up opportunities that you might never ever have. Totally. You know? I mean, like, had I not entered these things, like. A lot of things would not have happened for me uh, and uh, say what you want about competitions and you know whatever but they they have opened doors for me so I'm grateful for that but more than anything like you just said it pushes you to a different level yeah. and I'm grateful for that and it pu- yeah and and even working with those other artists yeah you, right because you want to you want to perform you totally. want to show up for them yeah absolutely you know? and, and th- that that's that's pretty that's pretty dope and they've been amazing networkers for me too when I've been there you know and um that I can't I mean the amount of people that I've met through competitions and whatnot I can't take there's nothing there's no price on that there's no award for that that's just the best how um with all this newfound like uh uh, uh, brand relationships and stuff um we know that on top of that comes a lot of travel you said you were just in Montreal and stuff yeah How, how does your how do your husband and kids do with with the travel I mean my kids are seven and 12 so they're kind of at ages that it works now I mean years ago I could have never even dreamed about doing this I would have never done that to my husband but they they make it work and my husband and I are such a good team I mean I owe so much to him and I know that sounds cliche but he like picks up all the pieces that I leave behind and I do I leave a lot behind but he's got it we're a team I don't 
plan anything when I leave for trips. I leave tomorrow for Sunday. I'm not going to lay out clothes. I'm not going to make meals. He's got it, you know. I mean, I think we're in a new generation of dads, too, so that's helpful. My dad could have never. <laughs> Love you, Dad, but he could have <laughs> never. So, yeah, I mean, it does come with a lot of travel, and I'm, you know, I'm figuring out the balance. I'm not the best at it. I've never mm-hmm. been good at balance, but... um Figuring it out, yeah. If you're good at balance, you wouldn't have met him at a cab. Yeah, you got that right. <laughs> right, right. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. So. There's more. There's more. Right. Yeah. That's really that's really good. I I I, uh, I often um you know Ashley Norman. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm such a big fan of hers because she's like awesome. she's like a boss lady no matter what shoes she's she wearing. She is. Right. Yeah. She's like she's a boss mom and like I love that she shows up in her diva like self. Yeah. But then the next she has post, a baby on her hip. Yeah. And yeah. but then the next post she'll be like no makeup with a baby. Yeah. And like. Just as boss, by the way, but Absolutely. owning that space. Like, yeah. I'm not like this. I don't have to be this hair diva now. I'm a Absolutely. mom diva, right? Yeah, and no, so I have dope. so much so respect great. for her, like, as Completely. a working mom. And, like, I mean, she's, like, to me, Ashley Norman is, like, an old school educator. That's oh. what I emulate to be because I've been in the industry for 19 years, and I feel like when I teach, I very much kind of go to that old school educator because that's what resonated for me. Mm -hmm. I still love head sheets. I still love breaking it all the way down to like the foundations of hair. And that's what she is, you know, in my mind, like that's how like she educates. So I just have so much respect for her. She's awesome. Do you, do you spend a lot of time preparing for these competitions? I do. Yeah. So like during kind of entry periods of competitions, I'm working constantly and because I'm shooting on my days off and, you know, doing, you know, I, I shoot usually once or twice a week anyways, but, um, during competition season, it's pretty intense. Cause I know like, we speak to a lot of people who do the Naha awards yeah. and stuff like that as well. And, and how much energy and time goes into that. It's and wild. I know you've been nominated quite a few. Yeah. Yeah. It's wild. It's, uh, it's time consuming, but in like, I always say it doesn't pay me any dollars, but it pays my heart and it pays my, feeds my soul. And I can't, that's way more. I mean, I am the thing too, with, um, with editorial work is so much we're investing. Like, um, my friend Brenetta Ashley, she's a super dope artist too. Um, she came in from San Francisco and, we were talking just like how much just on that shoot alone that we probably put into it. And it's, you know, in the thousands, like people, you're talking actual money, not just like, Oh yeah. Just, you know, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just money and, and time. And, um, but it's like, I can't put a price on it. I just love that side of the industry, the art side of it. And I don't care if it pays me any money ever. (laughs) I mean, I'd like it too, (laughs) please. (laughs) No, no, we get that. I mean, I, I, I think, I mean, indirectly it does because it opens up doors, right? And it does. Yeah. In a, in a roundabout way, it absolutely does. So, yeah. Yeah. And it pays an opportunity even if it's not, right? Even if it's not, you know, actual, actual dollars at the, at the, at the table at the moment. Yeah. Have you won an AHA? I have not. I haven't even gotten a nomination. That is a goal of mine for sure. I've entered twice, but like that is some stiff competition. I mean, the artists in Naha who get nominations, amazing. Like I just want to eventually get there. But I've gotten to assist some amazing Naha artists and seen their work in person and it's just so cool to be in those rooms. So, Th- that's really cool. Yeah. Have you worked with um with like Sage Studios down in Jacksonville I and Erica no. Keelan and all those uh-huh. guys and Darina? I'm like I'm I'm obsessed with Darina. Yeah. And all her. she's the photographer. Okay, for all got the work. It. She, yeah, yeah, she, she's a, she's a, she's amazing. We did a podcast with uh, a few years ago with Jamie Wiley. And yeah, she was, she's oh my gosh, amazing. And just I wanna, what like, the assist her, just like breathe the same air as her. Well, she's, she's here this weekend. You, should I'm we introduce like, her? Yeah, please, please. Yeah. Have you met her? No. She's our buddy. Yeah. yeah okay. Oh good. yeah, yeah. yeah we're I definitely. Knew she was at Presley and Poe. So yeah, yeah. yeah we're definitely introduce. She she's she's you'll love her. She's very Midwest and very like so down to earth yeah. but she was telling us like and i don't remember her exact it wasn't she didn't say she was embarrassed by her first collection but oh. she can see her learns from her first collection i'm absolutely embarrassed of Are my you? old work but it's good like it's a good that's why again going back to competitions it's good to see the growth every it's a timeline year. it's crazy to see that you know things that i was like oh my gosh this is the most like the dopest photo shoot I've ever done I look back and I was like what was I thinking <laughs> <laughs> you know and even now like I even as stuff from a year ago I was like oh that's cute you know like I thought yeah. it was like my best work well, at the time that's funny because you even when you look back in you know in your younger pictures and, and the hairstyles yes. right you're like what? What was I thinking? What yeah. was I doing? <laughs> Why did I have a perm? Totally, I know, right? That's the worst. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. Especially uh, you and I. Oh. 
Back in the 80s. Oh, and yeah. The mullets. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I still have my hair. The mullets today are so much cooler, though. They the ones, are. Oh. Like, the mullets now are definitely cooler than they Dude, were. Dude, let me tell you, Tony's the king of the mullet. Like, he'll, he'll never... Uh, He'll never chat about it, but the the mullet that he's putting out now are like killer. All uh, right. Yeah, he's got entire lacrosse teams because they're so dope. I love <laughs> it. Know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It ain't your barber's uh, mullet, I'll tell you right. that. You know, it's so cool. But you're right though. They just like they have more style, and it's not just yeah. It's yeah. not just like because they. The ones that we grew up with, they were like just bi level haircuts. They weren't right. like this really right. cool thing. Yeah. Now they're like, like art. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Now now it looks like art, you know? I love it. Yeah. It's 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 so 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 very cool. Um what do you are you still are you doing Naha this year? Um yeah, we're working on a little something with Design Me to do a Design Me team uh, entry. So yeah, hopefully. It's just again getting people's schedules and it is, like we said, a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of things that go into it. All right, hold on. Now we gotta we gotta back up a little bit. Something, something. Little something, something. Yeah, something, something. Something. yeah I'm not gonna ask for that. I mean yeah. you can show me the pictures later. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um but to me, Naha seems like such a personal yeah. investment, a personal vision. Like how do you do it as a team? So I've done a team entry. But I've done an individual entry. And I've done a team entry. So, you know, you got to find your makeup artist, your photographer, your, you know, all the people. And then just, like, collaboratively come up with a concept, which is hard sometimes with artists, right? We all have different visions and, you know, things don't always. But that's part of the process. And but when you're working with Design Me, are you working with, like, like the design? Or is, it, is it other hairdressers that you're working with as well? Yeah, or? so our team right now is um, myself, Philip, and Kyra Brown she's here in Chicago as well mm -hmm. and so we'll do something together as artists kind of like they have an Ulta team JC Penny you know they all but put so they'll do team. an actual like Naha kind of entry yeah. as as that's because it's Phil ever yeah. done enough I don't think he's ever done I mean yeah. we haven't even like yeah. told Phil for doing this but he's doing it breaking news right, right. first Naha right. <laughs> baby's oh, first fun. Naha right. yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna clip this and send it to him <laughs> yeah. Right, right. <laughs> yeah no but we've been talking about like a year ago when we were talking about Naha before Philip came on so now he's just in like you were right. grandfathered yeah. into doing this project with us <laughs> whether you like it or not <laughs> yeah oh, that's, that's awesome so. that is pretty cool how's it been working with him Oh my gosh, he's so cool. I was nervous to meet the Philip Wolf, right. but he's just so humble. And I had heard that, like people said, like, oh no, he's super nice. But you just never know until you meet someone. He was so cool, so humble, and yeah. a, a really great, like such a good vision too. So it was fun. It was fun shooting with him. Yeah, I'm excited to see what else we all do all it's together, obviously. That is exciting. So, yeah. That is you, know, you know, their Naha, Phillip's involved, is going to look like a Jedi. Right. 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 <laughs> right. <laughs> Yes, he's our Jedi. <laughs> he totally throws Jedi vibes. Yes, he, does. he clothes does. and everything. He's like clothes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's amazing. Yeah, no, um, he's awesome. So I'm really excited where um, where we go with Design Me with him on board. I think it's going to be cool. That's really really yeah. cool. How's it been like working with it, w working with the teams? Oh, it's fun. I love being on a team. I'm just like a team girl. Um, and a lot of times too on teams, you're still working independently and you're being sent places like uh this weekend i'll be in toronto till wednesday i'll be by myself a majority of the time but um no it's it's nice to have that like kind of again i hate the word family because i think of like it's toxic but you know what i mean kind of like family of people yeah. that you're like they all get it and we can bounce ideas off of each other it's been really great it's just really nice being in the room where uh somebody somebody in the room's drama doesn't dominate the room Ugh, yeah. listen <laughs> you know and that and, and when we talk about family that's what yeah. we talk about yeah you know it, it's like it's like this this is a drama free kind of like event or, this sure. is, or experience, right? Yeah, and that's so. again why I was drawn to all go and design me is like they are drama free. And I'm like nineteen years in, I'm done with drama. So <laughs> yeah. I appreciate drama free for sure. Right. But but even with that, there's a responsibility for what are you bringing? Oh, you know, absolutely. And then you, you kind of have to think like, okay, if I am I bringing drama? Yeah, no, you have you to know, check, yourself check yourself a lot. for sure. Yeah, and yeah. like I think a lot of that comes with maturity and time in the industry. Um, so you, you do, you have to check yourself. And w the thing is that I remind myself is, and this might sound bad, but there's a million really talented hairdressers out there. So if I, if, if you are on a team and you act a certain way, like you can be replaced very easily. So I think it's important to always kind of remember that, like I need to be my best self for this brand because you can be replaced. Everyone's replaceable. 
Yeah, so. I mean, I think if Instagram's proven one thing, to me it's proven, like, when I first got into Instagram, I go, oh, my gosh, there's some really talented people that we've never heard of. Yeah. Like, there, there's a, an, yeah, a lot. A following yeah. does not equate to uh, to talent anymore. Well, I mean, we were talking a little bit before we jumped on, to that, like, you know, people that are successful at Instagram, people that are successful at TikTok, you know, I, I often hear, like, shade being given about, like, they're yeah. not that talented of a hairdresser, or they're not this, or they're not that. But, you know, understand that they have a superpower. Yeah. You know, and, and whether that superpower is attention or whether that superpower is whatever, you know, and, and, and I'm at the point in my life and my career, like anybody that's doing the do, I, 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 I applaud. Right. Yeah. Like, like, like uh, your kids are a little too old, but like you ever watch Blippi on, on YouTube? Oh, yeah. My it's youngest go- loved Blippi. Okay, so it's the goofiest thing yeah. ever. But that guy's doing the thing. He's got merch. He's got a new show. Like, yeah, Blippi yeah. did like, something right. He works like, he's worth like $250 yeah. million, dollars, you yeah. know? And all I can do is go like, I, I watch him and all, like, yeah. he figured it out. Right. That Usually haters, haters, haters uh, they tend to want what they have, but they don't have the, uh, the, the, the commitment or the drive to do it. <laughs> So, Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I think it boils down to that. I know, like, again, there's a lot of conversations about, like, hustle culture, and I'm like, I will hustle till I die. Yeah. If nothing else, I'll be the hardest person, like, hardest working person in the room, because that's, I know I can do that. Talent, um, talent will come next. Well, you, you <laughs> brought it up. You talked about social media. Mm-hmm. Talk about her oh yeah, media. I want to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Talk so about the fool on the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how are you fooling the internet? So uh, there's a rumor that, like, you, uh, you explode it. Um, on Instagram in just a few months. And this was like, this is like recently, this isn't like 2014. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, probably 2021, 20, 22, I think, is when I started. I was like, okay, I've got to find a different edge in this market, right? Because people were doing the audios and doing the funny and um, doing the different transitions, whatever. And I'm like, I'm not good at all those things. So let me just act like an asshole on the internet. And <laughs> and it worked. So I... Um, I wanted to do, like, more kind of, like, original comedy things, very relatable. Again, I have uh, so much comedy being in the industry this long. You Uh have things to laugh about. So I tried to, too, it was during, like, uh, 2020 is when I kind of, like, started, like, dipping my toe in because it was just such a heavy time in the world. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, let's just laugh. Let's lighten things up a bit. And so um, I wanted to do something different, so I just did, like, kind of the original comedy, came up with my own kind of scripts and concepts and it really kind of took off I had some viral videos and that's how my Instagram kind of exploded in a couple months and now you know I'm just so when I, you say explode where'd you start and where'd you end I think up I had like 1800 followers un- under two for sure and then I ended up at like 20 within a couple months 20,000 yeah wow. yeah is that kind of cool to watch that happen it was it was weird though too because you know but exciting for sure. It was right. like all unknown territory because I for I had probably had my Instagram for maybe five years and it was just like slow <laughs> burn, you know, to like yeah. and two, I just needed something to kind of set me apart. You know, I was like, I I've I've got something to show people, but uh, there's a million talented hairdressers. I got to somehow find an edge in this market. And that's just the route I took. So <laughs> now well, I'm kind of like, yeah. well, I put myself in a box because everyone. I now you have to like, be goofy. You're the funny girl. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, yeah, I had some when <laughs> we were at the hair brain event, a girl came up to me and she goes, wait, so you're a hairstylist? And I was like, what have I done? <laughs> I've totally distracted people from the fact that I do hair. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I put myself in that box, but I'm trying to now kind of explore the other avenues of what I like to do, but I'm always going to do funny because that's who I am and I enjoy it. It's got to be, there's got to be a space though where you can be like silly, but also like show something like profound sure. as well. You know, it's yeah. just finding that kind of like. A Rod does it all the time. They what? A Rod does it all the time. Yeah. A Rod's figured it out. That's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to just find the balance and, you know, just I'm moving a little way, a little bit further away from it. And people will be like, you don't do it funny as much. I'm like, you know, no, I'm just kind of like figuring it out. But I'm yeah. still going to throw it in there because I do enjoy it. Like, a lot of the funny ones, like, no one's paid me to do those. Like, sure, of course, there's brands that are like, hey, can you do a funny video for us? But a lot of them By I the just way, do for fun. Yeah. terrible, like, can you do a funny? Can you be funny? Like, yeah. that's, yeah. like, the most pressure ever. Listen. Yeah. It'd be, be but funny. what I respect about, again, going back to Olive and Design Me is they never want, they're like, you can be funny if you want to, but you don't have to be. And I right. appreciate that. I respect that. That they respect that's me love. as an artist. Yeah, yeah, that's huge for me. That is love. Yeah. You know, that's so, crazy. Yeah. So what's cool is that, you know, you know you're good when you have, you know, 
not being dictated what to do. You know, the yeah. brand's allowing you to have the freedom to be you. and that's Absolutely. Yeah. No, I have mad respect for that because, you know, sometimes you do feel like, okay, I got to do what the brands want me to do. But the fact that they give me so much freedom is really, They really brought you nice. on because they yeah. want you to be you. Yeah, you which know? I love. And I, I think, you know, part of my doing the funny videos is I wanted to be relatable to the everyday hairstylist too. And, you know, sometimes this industry can be hard. And so, like... You know, if I can bring a little light and bring a little, like, relatability, that's that's what I want to do. But, you know, I, anyone that's listening in, to and I'm on my, I apologize, I'm going to be in my soapbox for a minute, but yeah. please don't embarrass the industry, and please, yeah. like, like, when you do your videos, I, I've never seen, like, disrespect to other hairdressers, I've no. never seen disrespect to to the industry as a whole, yeah. um, which, which I think, to be honest, is an art it's in itself, you know, to get the, it's very easy to get a follower, like, shitting on other hairdressers. Yeah, but, I really, but I yeah, I'm sorry, I really, that's a huge to me, to not to do that, to not climb. So that's kind of your funnel, so you're that like. That is, and sometimes that really narrows what you can do, right? But it's just, it's not something I'm willing to do, and it's not, you know, I never, I've had people that have said, like, oh, you're cheapening the industry by doing funny, and that's absolutely not what I'm aiming mm-hmm. to do. I have the most most respect for other hairdressers. Um, I like to make fun of myself first and foremost. So. Well, that's where, the, the, <laughs> as you watch them, that, 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 that's yeah, what, that's what good, comes across. Good. You know, it's like, if it's, it's self evas self evasing and stuff. It, so, I mean, I like that about, you know, th- you. that's funny to me. Yeah. You know, what's not funny to me is, you know, crapping on brands or crapping yeah. on other hairdressers or, or that kind of stuff. And I, and I think that Certainly, uh, if anyone sees that from outside the industry, I don't think it makes any of us look good, including right. yourself. I agree. No, you know, I absolutely agree. Yourself. There's things that you see and you're like, cringe, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah, exactly. Everyone's I, I unfollow a lot of those pages, yeah. you know, just because I'm just not mature enough. <laughs> you no, know? fair, like, fair. <laughs> I think, too, you have to, like, uh, cultivate a, a For You page that is going to make you feel good, too, at the end of the day. Social media is supposed to be a social app. It's supposed to... You know, bring us together. So what you're saying is that if I was if I'm on Instagram and I I knew you used to follow me and you're not following (laughs) me, so I got to check myself. Right, right. Exactly. I'll check check myself. Exactly. Yes. yes. I will know if I've gone too far. If I've gone, I will know. Well, Morgan, you're a friend now. Now I'll just text about girl. Stuck with me. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Silly. Right. No, no, no. I I think I think that's really important. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And I kind of like. I mean, we can talk about the gross side of social, but but I I don't want to kind of get 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 into all of that. Um, Dude, so how do people find you? How do they how do they kind of come hang out with you? What page What page you doing goofy shit on? Yeah, on my IG, (laughs) which is at Jade Beauty Co. Not my Uh name, but at Jade Beauty Co. Um, And that's the best way to reach me. My DMs are always open. I try to be like very responsive to people. Um, She's not that fun in her DMs. I'm not. No, (laughs) it's hard. It's hard. It's hard through text to be funny. But yeah, no, I'm always like I'm an open book, and I want people to feel again like. I'm relatable to you. You can always like approach me. You know. Have you done the TikTok? Th- I mean, have you? Uh, have you know, you I try. I can't I, figure it all out. I, yeah, listen, I'm too old or something. I don't know. It's just like my brain can't. I had a high school client of mine running my TikTok because I was like, "Girl, you know what you're doing," and then she was like, "I'm too busy," and so now my like TikToks completely fallen flat. But that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, that's cool, man. Thank yeah. you for hanging yeah. out. Oh, thank you. I'm so honored. You we'll get through the, the other half of the list on the Instagram later. Yeah. Uh, on the next <laughs> right. podcast. Yeah. Stop it. Stop, <laughs> Stop it. it. Stop it. Yeah, Stop it. Don't embarrass me. That's cool. Yeah. Thank, again, thank you, Jess. Thank Thanks you, for guys. hanging out. Thanks awesome. for coming into honor. Chicago for us. Yes. Wah, wah, yeah. wah. See, we're nice guys. You're scared we're nice guys. We're very nice guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You didn't say that before. <laughs> no. she, said, she said she was scared of us and all that no. kind of stuff. All right. Stop it. It is kind of weird when we meet people and they're like, they're Totally. Scared, well, you know? then Jay was like listing off my things, and that's when I get embarrassed. Like, please don't do that. Just introduce yeah, me. Yeah, no, you just fine. ran. Yes, you just ran right, away. Right, you know? right. uh, that's cool, no. though. But it's also cool. Like, I mean, like we were talking before, like, you know, just, just your, even your Instagram growth. Because currently, it's hard to do. It's really hard to do. It's very hard to do. You know, so, so the fact that you cut through, that is interesting. Yeah. You know, and, that, and, and I'm, I'm like, oh, well, how did you, you know, how do you figure that out? You know? Yeah. Just the marketing piece. You know, I, I think as hairstyles, we have to remember, we got to know how to market. 
the right way too. That's a big part. And you're of it. Pr- you're proving that it's not about necessarily about how to do a balayage, which is like yeah, you know, shoot me in the face if I see another balayage. Video, yeah, I mean, right? I'm this is not my genre of video. Like, I would mm-hmm. like to be that gal that's like behind the chair and showing videos. I just can't. No. <laughs> I, right. just I got can't. jokes to tell. <laughs> right, I, I got jokes. To I, got, uh, I got jokes. Yeah. I got jokes. She's so funny. Yeah. Awesome. Morgan, thanks thank for hanging out with us, and thank you for joining us on your day.